The Colts assistant coaches just spoke publicly about their new weapons for the first time today. So what they have to say, let's get to it. You are locked on Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. All right, what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Terms apply. What's up, everybody? This is Jake Arthur of HorseshoeHuddle.com. Glad to be back with you. I was, of course, on vacation all last week. Thanks to Zach for holding down the fort. Uh, but yeah, I missed you guys most of all, of course. Uh, missed doing this thing here. So today we're going to kind of, I've been playing catch up the last couple of days since I've been back. Uh, but luckily we had a little bit of Colts media availability today. Uh, we were fortunate enough to get to speak with uh, the Colts assistant coaches for the first time uh, following the 2024 NFL draft. Uh, so basically the position coaches, uh, whichever guys we needed to speak to today, uh, the coordinator spoke last week. So I uh, already kind of got a little bit from them, but it's always really good to, to speak with the position coaches. Um, a lot of these guys are ones that, you know, pound the table for some of these players throughout the draft process. Uh, so good to hear from them. Uh, specifically today, I spoke with new D line coach, Charlie Partridge linebackers coach Richard Smith, and of course, wide receivers coach Reggie Wayne. And uh, midway through, I'll actually play uh, the availability that we had with with Wayne for you. And uh, so you guys can kind of hear from the horse's mouth, so to speak. And then at the end of it, we'll uh, kind of catch up on what some of the players had to say. We heard from Quiddy Pay, Grover Stewart, and Braden Smith. So we'll uh, kind of catch up on some of the highlights there. Uh, but first up, new D-line coach Charlie Partridge. This was the first time we've gotten to speak with him at all, actually, since the Colts hired him. Uh, I believe it was back in, in February. He replaced former D-line coach Nate Ollie. And Partridge, this is this is that was a signing that got a lot of people really excited. Uh his uh his track record with working with players like uh JJ Watt, Trey Hendrickson, um, I believe Aaron Donald back in the day, Trey Flowers. So he's got a really, really good track record of, of working with high profile players. And as we know with the Colts, they've always got these really athletic defensive linemen that maybe need a little bit of development. They've already got some studs in DeForest Buckner, Grover Stewart. Uh, Samson Ebucom has has been a guy that's produced pretty much everywhere he's gone. Obviously, Quiddy Pay, Dio Dengbo, the list goes on. Um, Lyle to law to the Colts first round pick. This seems like a, a perfect match made in heaven. Cause this is already a pro ready pass rusher going to a guy known for getting the most out of his talent. So it's like, what else does this guy have in store in his game? You know, he's, he's not even yet hit the NFL yet, but he's already, uh, got a lot of tools in the bag. So Partridge just basically said, you know, they were, they were really excited to get the guy they felt, you know, was the, the top pass rusher in the draft. And, you know, for Partridge himself being the first year in the league and there you are at 15 and, and your team takes their top defensive player on the board. You really can't ask for more. And uh, as for Partridge and his story of getting to the NFL, uh, Chris Ballard told us maybe like before the draft, uh, I think it was that they had actually previously reached out to Partridge uh, in years past about their opening. Uh, but at the time, you know, he was he was locked into his commitment to Pitt. Uh, just wasn't really ready to to move on yet. Partridge kind of elaborated on that today. Uh, so, of course, he had his commitments at the college level that he didn't want to abandon. Uh, but family is also a really big thing to him. He didn't want to, you know, miss out on his his kids' childhood childhoods and things like that as as much as a coach has to. But it's also when you're a coach that's moving up through the ranks, moving your family is obviously uh, not ideal, and it, it can be hard on them especially when it's young kids and they don't really kind of grasp what's going on. So the stars kind of finally aligned for Partridge. It was a good time for him to, to jump to the NFL level and for the Colts and their benefit, they get a guy that they'd been after for at least a few years now. So uh, really cool to see that and what Partridge might be able to do for the Colts defensive line group, especially again, the guys that haven't really scratched the surface yet of what they could be. 
and if Partridge is the guy to get them there. Uh, so moving along to Richard Smith, the Colts linebackers coach, uh, this was someone that Ballard singled out specifically about uh, really being a big fan of Jalen Carlisle, uh, the safety convert to linebacker that the Colts drafted back on day three. Uh, and Smith just basically said, you know, the guy's got great athleticism. And when you take his his pre-draft measurables and athletic scores from the safety position and you convert them to the linebacker position, then they're outstanding. Of course, we know the Colts really, really value the athleticism, the size, the length, um, you know, the, the really high relative athletic scores and things like that. So Carlisle fits what they want to do. They appear to have a plan to get him on the field early in his career. Uh, I know the Colts do a lot of tinkering with, um, you know, that they have the will, they have the mic with Zaire Franklin and EJ Speed, of course. But I don't think they're so married to particular positions. I think it's really matchup based for them. Uh, so you may see Speed playing the Sam sometimes. You may see guys like Carlisle or Ronnie Harrison coming in and doing this and that. Uh, they they rotated a lot of like Cameron McGrone, Grant Stewart uh, last year as well. So and and Siguna Luby obviously factors into this too. But I think it would be a good idea for them to get Carlisle involved relatively early because. Pretty much everybody except for Zaire Franklin is a free agent next year. And realistically, they may not all be back, especially if you've got a talented young guy like Carlisle kind of waiting in the wings there. So uh, Smith also acknowledged, you know, that having a guy like Cato June as the assistant linebackers coach who's been there and done that and has gone through the same transition as Carlisle, uh, that's a big deal because, you know, they're, they're going to rely on, on each other quite a bit to collaborate and try and get the most out of this player. And they, they feel like he's got a really high ceiling, you know, drafting him where they did. And in, in, uh, on day three, if they can get a lot of productivity out of him, not just year one, because, I mean, you may be looking at a special team or an occasional defensive player in year one, but going into year two, the Colts have a good track record with this. Um, you know, they've had Bobby O'Karake that waited for a little bit. Anthony Walker waited for a little bit. Uh, Zaire Franklin obviously waited for a, a few years. Uh, EJ Speed as well. So the Colts know how to draft and develop linebackers. That's one thing that Chris Ballard has been very, very good at throughout his uh, his time in Indy. And then I, I briefly mentioned Zaire Franklin. Uh, Smith commented on Franklin getting a contract extension this offseason. Uh, very well deserved. You know, he had got one a couple years ago already, but had quickly outperformed it after, you know, setting the new franchise tackle record two years in a row and just being a full-time starting linebacker was far beyond what his contract was. And uh, Smith specifically spoke about, you know, Franklin playing while he was hurt last year, which was a big deal. I mean, you could see, I think it was a, I think it was a knee injury, but uh, Franklin, you know, he, he missed a little bit of time, at least practice time. And then he wasn't necessarily putting up those double digit tackle games every week. Like we had been seeing earlier in the season. Uh, but the guy was out there gutting it out, playing hurt, which it really endeared him even further to his coaches. And they felt like the payday was was well-deserved. And then last up, Reggie Wayne, of course, which is who everyone always wants to hear from the most, um, especially after the Colts drafted AD Adonai Mitchell uh, in the second round there. And, and we heard that Reggie Wayne was a huge proponent of that, had been beating the drum, uh, so to speak, throughout the draft process for him. And uh, so I'm not going to get into too much about Reggie because I'm actually going to play what I uh, what I heard for you uh, here in a moment. Uh, but, you know, he, he spoke about A.D. Mitchell and then he spoke about the guys they already have in Michael Pittman Jr., Alec Pierce and Josh Downs uh, had some really kind of glowing remarks to say about the whole group. So we'll go ahead and get into that in just a moment. Buying NFL tickets can be frustrating, especially if you aren't sure if the seats are good, you can't find last minute tickets, or there's no good deals whatsoever that you can find. However, with killer last minute deals and prices, views from your seat and the lowest price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying NFL tickets. Uh, the NFL schedule release is about to be Wednesday night. So, you know, we already know the Colts opponents, but just think about some of these games you're going to get, you know. Whether you're one of those those fans that will travel with the Colts, you'll see them on the road a couple times. They got some good home games too, but you know you got Houston twice, obviously with C.J. Stroud. 
There's a home game against Detroit. Detroit's getting better all the time. Just, just had a good draft. Miami, super high-flying offense. Should travel very well inside Lucas Oil Stadium. And then the Colts have four games against rookie quarterbacks if they're all starting at that time. So uh, some really exciting matchups for the Colts coming up. How many primetime games will they have? Uh, we'll we'll see all of that on Wednesday night after the uh, the schedule release. But, you know, with game time, you got the last minute deals. You can save up to 60 percent off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, whatever. You got the flash deals as well. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event zone deals as well. Save even more when you choose a section and let game time choose the seats for you. So, again, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day long? Do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Well, make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Remember, Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Did you observe at the Texas Pro Day that struck you? Um, just the way that he got in and out of his routes, right? He, he's a he's a guy that's that's different from everybody that we have in our room. You know what I mean? So, and that's kind of what you want. You kind of want different pieces of the puzzle, you know, so you kind of put it all together and, and, and create a create a hole at some point. In time. But um, just the way he got in and out of his routes, I already knew that his hands were real strong, right? He got pretty good hands. Um, and, and, and just the way he, you know, he's to be six two, right, and to be able to get in and out of your breaks that way, it's it's, it's, it's pretty special. And, um, he does it. He does it pretty much. What do you see him coaching wise? There's so much chatter about him in the draft process. All of the what did you observe there in your interactions with Texas staff? Or- um, I have I have no idea where all that stuff came from. Right, I kind of came in, you know, with one eye open and one eye closed. Right, but man, he's been he's been a joy to have in this building. Right, he's. he's Come in. I've heard other people on the staff talk about man. He's you know I, I like him. I like him. So I mean he's he's coming with a smile every single day, right? He's coming and he's he's joyful every morning, right? He's, he's not too, he, he's not like me, right? I can be I can definitely be moody, right? I can be moody, but he comes in and he's smiling and uh, he's excited to be in his building. He's excited to, to help. And he's ex- he's excited to learn. So that's a. Uh, that's 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 an arrow going on. How do you look at the three guys, the main three guys coming back, Pitt and Josh and, and Alec? What, what, what do you like about that group before you add these guys? Well, for one, they're all professionals, right? Let's just start there. That's that's half the battle, right? If you got guys that's in your room that's that's not a professional, right? That's that's what you call a detention center, right? I don't I don't want any parts of that, <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know, everybody has. You know, everybody has their role, right? Everybody knows that Pitt's the money man, right? Pitt's going to be the leader of the room, right? But everybody else, you know, like I tell them, you got to understand every single year that's a younger dude that's in this room that's looking up to not just Pitt, to you guys also, right? So we got to lead the way. We got we to gotta lead the storm, you know? So, um, you know, I, I just think as a group, you know, we got a young group that's been playing together for a few years now, right? They're all This is still a young group. Super young. Super young and still learning, right? Still learning. So that's uh that's that's what you want. Like the biggest thing that a lot of people don't understand is just having guys to play together this this long, right? And in three years it's not long at all, right? But you, you you know, you get used to used to, you know, guys going from this team to that team, you know. We got our core guys that's in there that knows this offense, you know, getting better at it every year. So it kind of reminds me of what I was used to. You know, just every year it's the same people in the room and you just gelled and got better as the years go on. How have you grown as a coach going into year three? I don't know. You might have to ask somebody else that. <laughs> I, 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 um, what, feel, what feels I, different to you then? Uh, for one, um, like, I, I got a rhythm now, right? I got a flow. Um, you know, I came in, you know, with, under Coach Frank and, then all of a sudden Frank was gone, so now you got a new head coach next year. You got to learn a whole new offense and the way it's running. 
and uh, and the way they do things. And so this is the first time right when I had an off season where it was the same offense, it was the same nucleus, right? So um, I was able to find a rhythm, you know, find a rhythm here and there. And um, now I can kind of get a style, I can get a get a feel on how I want to do things. So I kind of feel better in that aspect, but still lack sleep. <laughs> how do how do how do Alec and AD fit together in the receiving group? Uh, because they got different traits, right? They got mm -hmm. different traits, right? Um, Alec is still a you know he's still a guy that that can you know take the top off a of defense, right? Um, can do all those things uh, you know down the field. He can do some things intermediate also. AD is kind of a mixture of the same things, but you know he has a different. I'm still trying to learn him, right? He mm -hmm. has a different way of of maneuvering his body. Um, and it's it's kind of weird looking at times, but but um, but it, it works for him. It works for him, and if he's throwing me off, I, I know he's throwing the DB off. So it's 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 going to be special to see. Is there a different another level or difference to Pitt's game that he needs? To sure, I hope so. Uh, sure. We can't stop here. Right. <laughs> the investment is in. <laughs> right? We got to get the money's worth, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, right? Right. Right. Exactly. So. Um, no, I, I hope the arrows continue to grow, right? I, I, I think Pitt still wants to be the ultimate leader, right? He still don't have a C on his chest, right? What's the problem? Last year. Yeah, what's the problem, right? So you got to earn that. You got to earn that from your teammates. You got to earn that from everybody. So you got you to gotta get that, right? He still got uh, things that he hadn't accomplished, right? I, I feel like if Pitt's an all-star, if he's a pro bowler, right? We're, we're down for sure going to be in the playoffs. If, if, right? Josh, if, Josh, Josh, doesn't, a couple more. if Josh doesn't get hurt, with that knee middle of last year, it's, I mean his numbers were good, but are we talking about numbers that are even better? I can't. I'm not a fortune teller. I, I I just know what we had, and and shit, we we did pretty solid in our first year with him. So hopefully it gets better and better. But I can tell you right right, right now, he looks unbelievable, right? So hopefully um, that's a kind of that's that's a that's a vision of what this year is going to be for him, right? And and just him like. You know, he's he already came in, you know, being a professional and understanding the game and defenses and things like that. So, you know, just to get a second year with that and in his offense, it was gonna be good, man. I think I think as a group, as a group, if we just continue to, you know, keep bonding, keep getting better, we're gonna be all right. Reggie, you, you mentioned again you came in with Frank and all that. Are you surprised you're still here? I mean, because I thought that yes. you maybe did that is on the curiosity. Do I do I want to do this? Um, yeah. I mean, but I already <laughs> maybe fan that you like to do this more than you know. It, it's it's one of those things where I I it was a rabbit hole. I already knew that, right? It was where I know once you jump in it, you're not going to be satisfied, right? So it's uh, I'm not satisfied. I feel like I still. I hadn't been to a playoff game yet, <laughs> right? As a coach, like so, there's so much stuff that I want to get done. I hadn't, I hadn't had a guy that had ten touchdowns in the season. I hadn't had a guy that made a Pro Bowl. Like so, it's, it's things like the list never stops, you know. So, I think. Um, but you've got to still want to do it. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. I definitely enjoy it. I mean, this is. Uh, I've been around football since I was seven. You know, um, my dad was a coach. I used to see him throw notebooks and stuff. So it's, <laughs> I don't want to get that point, but you know, it's, um, it, it's, it, it means something to me. It, it do it. And, it, and I, I enjoy seeing, the, seeing guys excel. Beller mentioned that uh, he has told you, you can't tell them to do what you did. Yep. So, so you missed that part. You was on I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, to follow up with that, um, I'll, I'll, I'll get it for you. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> You, um, you, you, you mentioned you mentioned sleep. This is not about a story about the coach per se, but I, I talked to a lot of coaches this year about the fact that y'all don't sleep, and like that's not good in many ways. And, and I got a lot of good. Oh, I'm gonna get my sleep good, some kind of way. But I got a lot of good feedback, interesting feedback. Guys saying, you know what? I've been thinking a lot about that, and there's a better way. And I'm trying to be more efficient. You know, working from home and something, all that. Is there any of that in you, your you mind? You damn sure you hear that from here. No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> no, I did talk to Shane, and I did not get that answer. <laughs> However, I guess my question is, do you have to kind of think about ways that you can be more efficient and just, you know, because you've got to make split-second decisions yes, on game Yes, day, right? and that's what I meant earlier, too, yeah. right? It was when I said, you know, I got a rhythm. Mm -hmm. So I know when I can, you know, when I got time to do this and do that, right? You know, rather it's, 
you know, get breaking down extra tape to, to give to the guys, right? Or mm -hmm. find a way to get a workout in, right? I can't. One thing I'm not going to do, right? I'm still going to fit my same wardrobe. I'm not going to be the mother coach sitting up there and <laughs> I got, I'm going to stay some kind of way fit and lean because I'm not buying no new clothes. But it's a, it's a, it's a, now like I understand it. I see it. I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, I'm going to make this block a time to do this and then make this block a time to do that. So you, you got to be strategic and you got to figure it out. If not, should you be in meeting after meeting and you hadn't got anything done? It's winner take all in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, so let's talk players now, guys. Uh, so there was a few players that talked today. Right tackle Braden Smith, nose tackle Grover Stewart, and defensive end Quiddy Pay. Uh, so starting out with Braden, that's a guy who went through a lot last year, missed several games, uh, only played about half the season, dealt with kind of a litany of injuries. I think he had a wrist, a knee. Um, but what really had been causing him problems apparently was this left knee of his. He just had surgery on it this offseason. Uh, and he's currently in recovery mode. He's not back on the field quite yet. Uh, but he did say that he is starting to feel better. He's getting better by the week. Uh, kind of non-committal on a firm, you know, kind of timeline for that. Like, are you going to be ready by training camp? Yada, yada. Uh, he's not really a guy that's going to get into those type of specifics. Um, but, I mean, it's definitely good that he re he reflected on the fact that he's kind of learned from pushing himself too hard and not like allowing himself to rest and really giving himself the necessary time to get that thing right. Because if you remember this time last year, he was banged up. He wasn't really out there. He he pointed to last spring, the knee had been giving him issues and he played through it. And, you know, perhaps if he would have had surgery at that time, it would have cost him a huge chunk of the season. We don't really know that, but considering the fact that he's rehabbing now and there's you know, there's not a firm timeline. I would say that it's something that definitely needed to be done this offseason uh, from the sounds of it, if he was going to return to playing comfortably again. Uh, so you want to see your right tackle out there as, as healthy as he can be, because uh, he is one veteran on the team where there start to be questions about his longevity, whether, you know, retirement would even be in the question. And he said that's that's not really something he's thinking about. You know, you as he said, you know, you don't really know what tomorrow brings. So uh, he's just going out there and playing and, and kind of taking it day by day. Uh, so obviously when he's out there, he's a really, really solid player. Uh, you know, there was a couple seasons ago, he didn't give up any sacks. And uh, for the most part, he's had like two of the last three years where he's he's been pretty banged up. But overall throughout his career, uh, he's been pretty healthy. And again, very effective when he's out there. Now, the Colts have kind of reserved some contingency plans and insurance in the event that Smith does continue to miss time. You know, they had got Blake Freeland last year who had to fill in. He started nine games. Uh, most of them were for Smith on the right side. Uh, you know, Tanner Bordellini is going to be an inside guy for them. But Matt Consalvez, I think, is someone who's got inside outside versatility as well. So you hope to see Smith out there for the whole season. Uh, but the Colts do have options in the event that Smith isn't able to, or if he has to miss any time during this recovery. For my money, again, you want him out there the whole time, but we all want Braden out there at full strength, whatever that looks like for him. Uh, so if he's got to sit out and kind of get back to his baseline so he can build himself back up, I, I say you got to do it. It sounds necessary. Uh, next up, Grover Stewart. Uh, this is a guy, he's he's not always going to really dig into the X's and O's with you and everything, uh, but he is he is always willing to share a little bit. And for him, you know, in recent seasons, we've heard him talk about he wants more sacks, higher sack numbers. And now he, he says he wants to be considered just an elite player. He acknowledges he's already considered one of the best run stoppers in the NFL, but he wants to be considered an elite player. And the main way to get that is going to be more sacks. Um, I asked him specifically, you know, do you need a, a Pro Bowl nod to get that acknowledgement? And he said, you know, I, I think if I get more sacks, 
a Pro Bowl will come with it. So that's definitely, you know, that's on every player's list every year. Uh, but it feels like with Stewart to still be chasing development in your game, despite being really, really, really good at what you do specifically, because he is probably a better pass interior pass rusher than giving credit for just because of how good he is as a run stopper. Uh, but he wants more numbers. He wants more sacks. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, those one tacks, nose tackles, they don't always get those stats, but we'll see how it goes with Grover. I mean, the Colts have a loaded defensive line and you can't, you can't double team everybody. You know, the, those things are going to breed stats for your teammates. You know, we saw Abucon miss out on 10 sacks because Dio Dengbo kind of nabbed one from him. And with, you know, Quiddy Pay spoke today as well. He talked about a couple other times when he was right there, but his teammates got to him, got to the quarterback right there. So anything can happen. I don't think Grover is going to turn into some 10 sack guy, but is it in the realm of possibility that he puts up a career high in sacks or TFLs or anything this year? I, th- I think certainly um, he's still probably within his prime. Those tackles, a lot of them seem to, to last quite a bit. So we'll see. I, I think everyone's on uh on Grover's side on this one. Cause I mean, that's, it's one of the most fun dudes to follow on this entire team. So last up quitty pay. Uh, this is a guy whose future with the team was kind of called into question right after Lyle to Latu was drafted and for, for good reasoning. However, Quiddy's not the only one coming up on free agency. You know, the Colts had a fifth year option to decide whether or not to choose for him. That would have made him a free agent this year, or I mean, uh, 2025 or 2026, whether depending on what the Colts decided. But Dio Dengbo was also coming up on free agency next spring. And then again, Ebucom, two, two off seasons from now, uh, the Colts did ultimately decide to pick up that fifth year option. Um, is he where they want him to be probably totally as a player? Probably not yet. But you pick up a fifth-year option for that guy. Number one, they acknowledge that he is a terrific run stopper as a defensive end. But it's an investment in what they still think he can be. That's kind of where you bring Charlie Partridge back into the picture as well. Quiddy has been a a solid pass rusher as well. Something that kind of plagued him at Michigan was, despite being played all over and not really being groomed to be a solid pass rusher at the NFL level for what he did at Michigan, um, one thing was he, he didn't always finish plays, not, not an effort thing, but he would get to the pass rush, but it just wouldn't result in a sack basically. And that's kind of been, that's been something that's happened in the NFL as well. I think he's been a lot more productive as a pass rusher than the numbers would say, but there's still a guy that who seems to build on himself every year. You know, he had, he just had a career season again. So it's not like he's bad. Um, I mean, does he have the ceiling of law to probably not, but I, that's still a guy worth having around on your team. And right now, if, if your defensive end rotation is Quiddy pay, Samson, Ebicom, Dio Dengbo, Lyot to Latu, Taekwon Lewis, like you just, we're not even talking about like the younger other athletic guys that have potential as well. Like they, they were they're It's a pretty stock covered there on the defensive line. Uh, but for pay, when he spoke today, he said the Colts picking up that fifth year option, more than anything, it just gives him more motivation to kind of prove them right and, you know, reach those levels of success that the Colts envisioned for him. Uh, plus, he, you know, he commented on the pass rush depth. It's a really it was a really interesting thing to hear from a player, because when you have that that amount of players on your defensive line, particularly at your position, not everybody can play all the snaps. So it's going to mean a decrease in snaps for you somehow. But he made a good point that these guys may be seeing fewer snaps now because of the amount of players on the on the field, but it keeps you fresher. And just a hypothetical number, this is way low, but let's say now you're playing 16 snaps instead of 20. Well, since you're coming off the field more, those 16 snaps, you're going to have a lot more juice to them than you would with the 20, you know. Uh, so sure, he may have to take a small haircut in snaps, but those snaps that he is on the field for. And it's again with Dio, Ebucom, Latu, all of these guys, it's the same thing. Since you're coming off the field more and being able to rest a little more, you're just going to be able to pour more into those limited snaps. So it's, it's a really good perspective to have. I think it's a team perspective. And uh, I, I think 
if Partridge is what he's projected to be as a coach and someone who's able to get the most out of these guys uh, from a talent perspective, I think it's a really good recipe for the Colts. And again, a, a good a good perspective to have. Um, and then Quiddy, of course, he already had some knowledge of Latu coming into this thing uh, because Latu, Quiddy, Dio, Ebucom, they all train with a friend of the show, Coach Eddie. And so Quiddy knew Latu coming into this, and he already had a strong impression of him, uh, called him slippery today. Uh, just said he's a guy with, you know, a, a really good tool belt to him, just a really productive pass rusher, and they can all learn from each other. So however you look at it, good problem to have with with that many quality defensive linemen. Uh, and with that, I think that's going to put a bow on it for us today. Don't forget that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Of course, if you guys don't already, please follow at Locked On Colts, at Jake Arthur NFL, and at Zach Hicks 2 on Twitter. Also, subscribe on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. We would also love your ratings and reviews as well. And with that, again, tomorrow is the schedule release. We will see you guys right after.